Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and today we're back at my dad's house to take down what is probably going to be a really challenging tree. Now, if you look up here, we've got a lot of weight pulling this direction, and the tree is really damaged and split. This tree is going to fall probably pretty soon, the next big windstorm. It's going to fall and land on this building. So we need to get it you know, to fall that way. And there's a few challenges there. I think we've got a pretty good plan in place. The first thing we need to do is all of this weight right here needs to come off. So it's pretty high up. So I've brought my safety basket for the front of the tractor. We're gonna use that in a pole saw to limb as much of the unnecessary weight off as possible before we deal with the main section of trunk. One other thing is, I was packing up all the gear that I needed today, and I left home without my camera. So if we've got any wind noise or we don't get as good of shots as normal, that's why. Let's take a look at this trunk of this tree. I called this a safety basket. That's what the manufacturer calls it. People are going to say it's not safe being lifted up by the hydraulics of a tractor. Your hydraulics could fail and drop you. There is some truth to that. But you know what else isn't safe? Standing on a ladder to do this is not safe. Most options for how to do this have some risk. I have a family member who was seriously injured while working out of a licensed and insured bucket truck. And the the boom on the truck failed and dropped him. So there's no safe way. I think this is about as safe as I can do today. Too many pedals. Dad's not used to driving the tractor, so we're gonna do the quick tutorial here. The really nice thing about using this, this basket with this tractor is the, level, the loader self levels. So you don't have to ever tilt or curl. You push down, raise up on the lever there, forward and backward, yeah. Whatever level it's at, it will maintain that no matter what you do. Looks like it's slightly tipped back. So it should be that way to lean it forward a little. There you go. And then get it where we want it, and then it'll stay there no matter how much up and down we do. Then all you've got the brake pedal, a forward and a back. So put it in gear. And you almost never have to use the brake. When you let off the pedal, it just stops. I have this bad throw. If I push a little, it goes slow. If I push more, it goes faster. Yeah, and the throttle is also tied to the pedal. So when you push harder, it throttles up. All right, so what I'm using today is a steel combi system weed eater head with one extension and then a pole saw. And I've got a brand new chain on it. We got gas and oil. So hopefully this will do a good job. The idea is to start out at the end of that, cutting little stuff and just working back in small chunks, try to take that entire limb off. Need to pull forward, don't I? Yeah. Need to get as far that way as possible and then up higher.
I wish I had a rope on it right now, I could just break it off. We don't know which way it's going. If it goes towards you, that's not good. Let's uh, back up a little bit. Beautiful. Yep. We made a tremendous amount of difference in which way that's going to fall. That has to help, right? Yep. All right. We're shifting the weight towards where we want it to go. Originally, my plan was that I was going to pull the tree with the tractor, hook a chain up high, and then just use the tractor to pull. But I like the idea of using the winch better because my dad can control the winch while I'm running the saw, and we can see each other as opposed to sitting in the seat of the tractor. It's harder to do that, and you can put more kind of gradual pressure, more under control, and the truck weighs, you know, a lot more than the tractor anyway. So... I think we're far enough away, so now we're gonna go up in the tree and get a chain hooked, and then we'll look at the uh, plan for how to make the cut. At this point, I would feel really good about this if this was a straight trunk, this diameter that just came up and, and curved. What I don't like about it is, you can see right here, this is split almost all the way down. Then you've got all of this where three different parts of the tree previously came together. This is all rotten. You can see this is hollow, rotten, not holding anything. Then you keep going up. This is all twisted. This is all twisted. This has been raining into this spot right here. And this splits off. And this is too high to cut it. Hypothetically, I could get up in the lift, and, but I don't want to run a chainsaw from up in that. And I don't want to cut above my head. So I'm going to have to cut it down here. And we can see this tree. It's a maple, which is a brittle tree already. It's dead. It's rotten. You probably almost just pull the darn thing over. But the problem with pulling it while it's still got material held is it can split up the tree, barber chair, do all kinds of funny things. So I'm not 100% how I'm going to make the cut. I'm considering... Cutting down this and cutting across here, removing every bit of material from this, and then making my cut as if this was the only part of the tree. Now my plan has been, with this being a leaning tree, if it was a traditional cut, I would snipe my hinge really thin on this side, leave a thick hinge on that side, and that's going to turn it towards where we're trying to pull. And I guess that's still what I'm going to do. I didn't bring a cable dampener, so we 
We grab this to use as a cable dampener. Now that hinge is five inches and I wanted to go deeper, but then uh, I felt it was a safety thing to back away. Overall, I'd say that went pretty smooth. It's another opportunity to learn and to get better. This ended up being reasonably solid. I would have liked to have cut another inch off of this hinge before pulling it to risk it splitting. But this, this maple's so brittle that it just, it cracked. I heard a crack while this hinge was still thick. When I heard that crack, I said, time to pull. I started waving to dad and you could see the winch clearly pulling it that way. And then it kind of shifted and landed where we thought it would. So honestly, I feel pretty good about it. Nothing went wrong today. We'll get this cleaned up and, and I, go uh, cool off. But I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos and I'll see you next time.